Hello everyone and welcome to the Food Rising Revolution. My name is Mike Adams and in this video I'm going to introduce to you what I consider to be a, a revolutionary low-tech technology for decentralized, grassroots, low-cost, high nutrient density food production using what I consider to be breakthrough technologies, using um, certain parts that you can print on your own 3D printer and we're giving away this technology to the world for free because of the dire state of affairs of our world, the need for decentralized revolutionary technologies, the need for real food for people to feed our children, to show people how to be more food self-reliant, to have food security so that we have a decentralized food production network. You see, um, well, and you're looking at it, by the way, this is the system I'm going to describe and share with you right here. We're giving it away. Uh, the do-it-yourself videos, how to build them yourself, the downloadable 3D objects that you can print on your own printer. These are some of the key functional parts that are in the system. I'll describe all this in a minute. But first, let me brief you on the, the philosophy. Everyone who can still think knows that our world is being destroyed by greed, uh, corporate corruption, centralization, monopolization of power. Uh, we've got only five or six corporations that control basically all the news that you see in here, and it's almost entirely fabricated. We have just a few big corporations that control most of the food supply. And it's all shadow foods. All the nutrients that you need, or most of them, are, are missing from the food. Most people are growing up and living on food that will promote cancer and diabetes and heart disease and Alzheimer's. And it's, it's a system that's unsustainable. We live in a world where corporations and governments and people don't think long term. And so they use up all the fossil water, they pollute and overfish the oceans, they destroy the topsoils, they farm using uh, chemical agriculture and mechanized systems of mass production that are simply unsustainable. Our world is headed for um, absolute implosion of many of the things that we've come to rely on. Uh, such as uh, cheap food and cheap, easy water supplies. In fact, there's, there's a concept out there now called peak food, that the world's food production has already reached its peak, and it's now starting to decline. And you see it. Look at the droughts in California, the destruction of the almond crops, the, uh, the loss of all the orchards, uh, the weather radicalization that is causing crop losses all around the world, the implosion of the seed supply, the loss of seed diversity, the attacks on small farmers and community farmers, and even home gardening, where uh, home gardeners are sometimes threatened with jail time for teaching their children how to grow food. We're watching some very, very concerning uh, trends for our world where f real food is under attack. And if we don't change the rules of the game, we are headed for mass starvation. So I think we should change the rules of the game. And that's what this is all about. The food rising revolution changes the rules and it makes corporate centralized monopolized agriculture largely obsolete. This technology that I'm going to share with you here that I developed uh, as part of the Food Rising Nonprofit Initiative is a non-electric food production system that produces food with very little effort at very low cost or just pennies on the dollar and yet it produces the most nutritious food that you can find anywhere in the world because of the formulation of the plant nutrients that go into this system. Now, um, where to begin? Let me show you some roots. It's always a good place to begin. See this? What we have here is Mother Nature solving problems 
And if we're smart enough to harness Mother Nature, we can allow her to uh, replace complex pumps and moving parts and electrical components that are normally used in systems of hydroponics and aquaponics. What we have, what you're actually looking at here is a miracle that almost no one ever talks about. Very few people know about this. This overall technology is called non-circulating hydroponics. And it has been used in Taiwan for many, many decades to grow food in what you might call swamp water, water that's not moving, it's not circulating. A professor at the University of Hawaii called Professor Bernard Kratke has been teaching this methodology for many, many years, but it, it never became very popular. And I think I know why. <laughs> because it's so low cost, there's almost nothing to sell. There's nothing to sell you. You can learn how to do this yourself. You can build these systems very cheaply. So I decided I wanted to bring this technology into the modern world and design 3D printable components and parts and then streamline and simplify this system for our modern world and then give it away for free. To launch a revolution in food production that would not try to fight corporate agriculture, but would make corporate agriculture largely obsolete. This is a self-reliant food production technology that can empower billions of people all around the world. And because it uses no electricity, it's universal. It will work after an EMP attack. It will work after the power grid fails. It'll work in a, after a natural disaster. It'll work in a war zone. And I've gone to great lengths to design these parts around common items such as a paper clip, a pencil eraser, a discarded vitamin bottle, and you can even print these parts using filament that can be scavenged from landfill, such as plastic bottles and milk jugs. So using this technology that I'm going to go into in more detail here, you can actually turn trash into food production systems that produce nutrient-rich food at pennies, uh, for pennies on the dollar. But getting back to these roots, because this is where the magic really happens. In non-circulating hydroponics, as taught by Professor Kratke at the University of Hawaii in Hilo, these lower roots are specialized roots that are different from the function of these upper roots. In the bins that you see here, the water is not all the way at the top. The water is kept at a constant level, about roughly two inches of water. The rest is air. The roots that touch the water become specialized water absorbers and nutrient absorbers. They shuttle nutrients and water into the plant to, to give it nitrogen, to give it the trace minerals that it needs to support its growth and its photosynthesis and hydration and of course water transpiration, normal for plants. But these roots that are in the upper part of the chamber are hanging in the air. What are they doing? Well, it turns out they become specialized air diffusers. They grab air and the nitrogen in the air and the carbon dioxide in the air. And they push that air into the plants and into the water even, and they replace the need for oxygen pumps in hydroponic systems. So these systems, using the miracles of Mother Nature, do not require any circulating pumps. They don't require any air injection pumps whatsoever. And so if you're clever enough and even I think humble enough to respect Mother Nature and try to work with Mother Nature instead of fighting her the way that the, the chemical pesticide companies do, then you can, you can produce an enormous amount of food at extremely low cost far lower than anyone normally would imagine. For example, this bunch of lettuce right here is grown using this technology, grown without effort. I have not done anything to that bin of, of lettuce after planting the seed. I walked away for weeks, and there it is, ready to make a salad. That head of lettuce cost me about 10 cents. 10 cents worth of plant food nutrients. Every pound of nutrients can grow between 50 and 100 heads of lettuce. 
You can also grow medicinal herbs, oregano, with powerful anti-cancer properties that are well documented in the scientific literature. You can grow them for pennies. You can grow uh, basil over here and peppermint over here and, and all kinds of different herbs, different lettuces. You can grow strawberries. You can grow tomatoes, cucumbers, even zucchini. Uh, there's even an adaptation of the system that I'm working on where you can grow root vegetables, carrots and beets, sweet potatoes. Right here we have uh, green beans sprouting. It's the middle of February and I'm sprouting green beans. And they're, they're doing great. There's eight plants that have just sprouted it in the last couple of days. They're going to do uh, amazingly well. So this is the food rising revolution. Now you can learn how to build these systems yourself using the free videos that I've given away, that I've posted publicly on foodrising.org. You can also download the 3D printable parts that I've designed using CAD software over the last several months. In fact, it was uh, last Thanksgiving. See, I don't take holidays off. I, I use holidays to teach myself something that I can use in projects like this for humanity. And last Thanksgiving, that's Thanksgiving of 2014, I learned um, a piece of software called SolidWorks. It's a CAD system. I used SolidWorks to design these parts, and they went through many, many revisions. But let me explain what this is. Th these bins function on a principle of the water being at a controlled height. The water needs to remain at that height to support the root specialization that I just described earlier, where you have a couple of inches of water and nutrients and then a gap of air. So you need what's called a, a, an automatic float valve in order to accomplish that, and then a reservoir of water at a, at a larger, a, a higher elevation that is then gravity fed into the bin and the float valve shuts off the water when the water reaches a certain height. If the water drops, the float valve opens up, lets more water come in. So this maintains a constant height. And if you'll notice, this actually has a hinge valve function built into it because that's what it's for. Now, once you have a float valve, you have this system almost completely done at that point. But the float valve, it's, it's very difficult to create a float valve from scratch. Right now you have to buy them commercially. You can get them on Amazon.com. They're made for fish aquariums and things like that. You plug in a, a quarter inch drip line and they will control the water flow with a float. But what do you do if those are, are not available? or if you don't want the plastics with the BPA in them that are part of those, or if you don't want the complex metal parts, what do you do? You go to foodrising.org and you download the parts that I posted that I designed. These are 3D printable parts that you can print on your own printer. And using your 3D printer, you can then combine those objects, and I teach you how to print them yourself, with print instructions, the exact print temperature, layer height, flow rates, adhesion uh, uh, tactics or, or strategies for the print bed, things like that. You go out and you, you get some common objects to make this. You need a pencil eraser from a common, you know, school pencil. Uh, what's it called? A number two lead, lead pencil. You need a paper clip. The paper clip is unfolded and turned into a straight uh, piece of steel, which is put through here, and it becomes the hinge. It is now the functioning hinge. You need a discarded vitamin bottle with a specific uh, diameter lid that's very common in the marketplace. This bottle becomes the actual float and it simply connects, see there's, there's a vitamin bottle, it connects to the float receiver or adapter and that, using the pencil eraser in here, closes and opens the float valve hole in the receiver. The receiver is attached to the side of the bin using a common garden hose rubber washer or a, what you might call a, a garden hose o-ring commonly available at hardware stores. So if you can find a paper clip, a pencil eraser, a garden hose washer, and you could also make this yourself out of an old bicycle inner tube if you wanted to, and an old vitamin bottle, a discarded vitamin bottle, 
And if you can find some plastic trash in the landfill, water bottles, milk jugs, you name it, you can, using an extruder and a 3D printer, you can convert those objects into food production systems. You can literally transform trash into food for pennies on the dollar. I don't know about you, but I think that's, I think that's pretty revolutionary. You think about what's happening in our world right now, food's becoming more and more expensive and less and less nutritious at the same time. People are deficient in minerals like zinc and selenium, molybdenum, uh, even magnesium. Uh, people are eating food that's made by big mega corporate factories and poisoned with glyphosate and pesticides and genetically engineered to supposedly be drought resistant and yet it doesn't work as well as they say it does. So food's becoming more and more expensive, more scarce, production is falling, and prices are rising. It's not difficult to see where that leads us if we don't change the rules of the game, if we don't start a revolution. This system, the food rising revolution, these what I call the mini farm grow boxes, this can empower people with the ability to grow their own highly nutritious foods for pennies. So you think about, well, let's take an inner city family living in Detroit. They live in something that the food experts call food deserts. Food deserts are places where you can't really find nutritious food. Uh, you know, they use often EBT cards to purchase processed food at a, at a local convenience store. And it's no wonder that those people living in that situation are having very, very high rates of diabetes, heart disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, kidney disorders, skin disorders, attention deficit disorders, and so on. They don't have real nutrition, but if you give them this kind of technology, you show them how to do this, you share this message with people who are being really victimized by the corporate uh, food production system, then you can change the rules of the game for them too. You can empower them with the ability to grow their own high nutrient density lettuce plants. They can make their own salads. They can do their own juicing. They can grow their own medicine. This is fresh oregano. They can save their own seeds. This is a lettuce plant that's already going to seed. I was eating salads off of this for, I don't know, six weeks or so, and now, now I'm allowing it to go to seed, to save the seeds. When you empower people with this technology, you really allow them to save their own lives, to prevent disease, to nourish themselves in ways that they never had access to before. You teach children how to experience the joy of growing their own food. And so one of the things that I've done as the executive director of the nonprofit Consumer Wellness Center is I've set a goal to donate 250 of these systems to schools across America. And as of this recording, we have uh, secured funding for over 175, maybe 180 systems at this point. And we have approved donation requests from over 100 schools, churches, home schools, and community centers. And these will be shipping out uh, the first week of March to show people this revolution. Now, this, this is being given away on purpose. This is being given away because I believe that the model of our world, the, the, the greed-driven profit models, the central banking systems, the, the mega food corporations, the biotech industries, I believe that these models will only lead us to our own destruction. Corporations only care about greed. They may act like they care about children or people, but they really don't. They only care about their bottom line profits. And usually that comes from denying people access to empowering technology that would allow them to grow their own food or solve their own problems or be more self-reliant, more independent. So we have a world where the corporations and the governments that they control in an almost, uh, you might call a soft fascism type of arrangement, corporations and governments working together against the people to betray the interests of the people. You have knowledge that is withheld from the people. Knowledge of the anti-cancer properties of oregano herbs, for example. 
but also knowledge of how to produce your own food very cheaply, very efficiently, without using toxic chemicals, without using genetic engineering, without using fossil fuels and a tractor to plow up a field and grow food. You don't, you don't actually need any of that. See, this is, what I'm sharing with you is sort of like, this is to the food system what free energy would be to the power grid. If, if, if free energy technologies were cheap and readily available and, and actually easy to build and existed, it would make the, the power grid obsolete. It would make the power companies obsolete. It would cause the decentralization of home-based power production. And there are many people out there who believe that that technology exists and that it's being suppressed, but that's not, that's not my focus here. What I'm saying is that this is the equivalent for food. This is sort of like almost free energy for food or almost free food that you can produce almost anywhere in the world that you have sunlight and water. <laughs> that's, you know, and seeds, that's all it takes. So this is setting people free. This is launching a revolution. This is creating a network of food security by decentralizing food production, putting it back into the hands of grassroots people, making it something that every individual, every family, every household, every community center, every church can have instant access to. You could grow. Every, every school in America could grow all the lettuce that they serve in the cafeteria using this system. And it would actually cost them less than buying the lettuce that they buy that is nutrient deficient. And it's not just lettuce. You could grow strawberries here. You, you know, you can grow the tomatoes. You can grow vegetables. You can grow juicing materials. You can grow medicinal herbs. You can actually extract the oregano essential oil from this and create anti-cancer essential oils from the herbs that you grow here that are more potent, really, than almost anything you could find anywhere else. Uh, you know, look, think about when you buy spices that are imported into North America, they usually come from India or China, and they're usually fumigated or irradiated to kill the bugs. So you're getting, you're getting a dead, dried spice. Most of the essential oils have been denatured or, or just evaporated. They're gone. You're getting shadow food. Instead, using this food rising grow system, you can have real food. So that's what this is really all about. This is putting the power into your hands to grow food and produce nutrient-rich plants for juicing or eating or medicinal purposes or propagation purposes for saving seeds and sharing seeds. This is... Uh, this is truly revolutionary. And that's why I'm really, really thrilled to be able to share this with the world. That's why I'm giving it away. Because I believe that the world needs this kind of solution to be widely shared and not um, controlled through corporate greed. I, I strongly disagree with the corporate greed model. So, what do you need to make this happen? Well, it's very simple. Number one, you can go to foodrising.org and you can watch the free do-it-yourself videos. And in those videos, I show you how to build these systems using common parts that you could find at any hardware store. You obviously need a, a bin. Uh, we're using these bins that are HDPE, high-density polyethylene, made in America. See, there, there's the float valve installed right there, as you can see. Um, this is a very, very resilient material. We are using a computer control, the CNC router, to cut out the precision holes in the lids at our manufacturing facility in Texas. And then we are getting uh, some tubing from US companies. Uh, basically, we're sourcing everything from the United States that we can. The filament that we use to print these parts is created by a company near St. Louis called Tallman. And uh, I worked with Tom Tallman to develop a custom polymer filament. Uh, we we co-created it together. And that is called Tallman a Polar White. And it's going to be on the market soon. And it, it has very, very strong layer-to-layer -layer adhesion properties. Uh, in fact, this piece, this float valve receiver, is printed with the Tallman polar white tea glass uh, polymer that I helped develop. 
And that, that's a breakthrough filament because it's watertight and it's extremely strong. It's very, very strong. It's very hard to break the parts. I can't even break this nozzle off if I try. Uh, that's how strong it is. So we're getting all of these from uh, American companies. And I'm focused on innovation here in Texas and then giving away this solution to the world for free because I want you to copy these ideas. I want you to improve them. I want you to create your own 3D objects. Maybe you can make something better than what I made and let us post it at foodrising.org so other people can download those parts. And by the way, this whole invention here, this system is just one of five key inventions that I'll be announcing this year. And all of these inventions, what they have in common is that they will be posted for free on foodrising.org and they're based on downloadable 3D printable parts that you can download for free and print yourself. They're all practical inventions that are useful everywhere in the world, including developing nations, including Im impoverished nations or, or even inner cities or areas that are ravaged by war or natural disasters. You'll be able to take these 3D object files and print out these parts and solve important problems. Uh, for example, one of my inventions that's coming up can actually remove arsenic from well water and you can print it out on a 3D printer. And I know that sounds amazing. I mean, I mean it almost sounds impossible, I think. <laughs> How can you print a, a, an object that can remove arsenic from well water? Well, I have the lab, I have the uh, atomic spectrometry laboratory that's already proven that it works. And I'll be giving you that object, that, those plans for free and you can print them yourself. Uh, this works. This, this seems amazing, and here it is, right, right in front of you. Um, if you. If you were to ask me two years ago, can you grow plants in a hydroponic system without soil, without using electricity, and no circulation? Is that even possible? I would have said, I don't think so. I've never heard of anything like that. Well, it turns out it is possible. Thanks to people like Professor Kratke at the University of Hawaii in Hilo, uh, that knowledge has been passed on. That knowledge has been taught to others. Uh, author, an author named Christian Berg, who wrote a, a book. I don't, I don't remember the exact title, but it's something like the Guide to Non-Circulating Hydroponics. Uh, I read his book. I learned from him. He passed on that knowledge, and now I've taken that knowledge and I have put it into a simplified form. I've updated it into uh, the technology of today: 3D printing, additive manufacturing. Uh, computer-controlled routing for precision cuts. And I have now shared this with you, and now it's your turn. Why don't you take this concept, teach it to, to, well, teach it to yourself first, teach it to others next, share it, improve it, and pay it forward. You know, that's what this is really all about. This is not about uh, uh, one, one person. Uh, this is about the power of multiple minds to create a revolution, to really make it happen, to make the, uh, the dead model of corporate greed and, and corporate control and monopolization, to, to overthrow that model, really to make it obsolete. This is how it works. It starts with people like you and me who are willing to do what's right for humanity, who are more interested in helping people than simply padding their own pockets with profits. That's that model, that model isn't sustainable. I mean, there's nothing wrong with making an honest profit selling a, a, an ethical product or service. I'm not against the free market. I just want to be clear. In fact, I mean, we, we sell these systems already made, too, for those who want to buy them already made. It's your choice. You can make it yourself, or you can buy it from us. You know, it's, it's your choice. I prefer you make it yourself. <laughs> Actually, it's easier for us than not to have to inventory all this stuff. But uh, making an honest profit is, is, is ethical if your product is honest, but at the same time, you have to think beyond just the profit. You have to think about, well, how can we give back to society? How can we uh, empower people with these solutions? How can we share this knowledge and, and then accelerate the cycles of, of open source development, the cycles of, of knowledge and wisdom that have kept humanity alive for thousands of generations, you know, seed saving, uh, a plant, you know, nutrient uptake, uh, 
the use of medicinal herbs by indigenous populations around the planet for thousands and thousands of years. This is crucial knowledge for humanity and there are corporate interests right now that are trying to destroy that knowledge. They're trying to destroy the seed diversity. They're trying to destroy knowledge of the medicinal uses of herbs. The FDA is trying to destroy that. The United States government is trying to destroy what you see here, which is the freedom to farm, freedom to grow your own food, freedom to produce your own home medicine, freedom to even sell, harvest and sell seeds. There are, it's illegal to sell some seeds in some states. Some, there are seed banks that are in legal trouble because they're, they're sharing seeds with people and you know the government doesn't like that. So I need your help. I need your help to, to help save our future our food future. Go to foodrising.org, uh, help us write about the website, link to us, but more importantly, um, watch the videos, build these systems yourself. Download the 3D printable parts, print them yourself. Start growing your own food. It costs you almost nothing. And it's amazingly rewarding to grow your own food. I mean, look at this, this is super nutritious and you know the root system that I showed you earlier are, are really well developed this lettuce is so happy and it's just going to get even happier <laughs> as as it continues to grow and it, I, if I showed you down in that bin there's you know there's a vitamin bottle serving as the float I have turned you know like trash into food systems using this technology that I'm sharing with you and I need your help to spread the word so I need you independent-minded people, people who believe in better than organic food, even preppers and survivalists, people who believe in food freedom, people who believe in nourishing children, people who believe in innovation. I need your help to spread the word and make this happen. My name is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, and you can find all of this at foodrising.org.